Question 9 from the 2019 National 5 Physics Exam from SQA and from Section 2. A lifeboat crew is made up of local volunteers. When there is an emergency, they have to get into lifeboat quickly. The lifeboat crew members are alerted to an emergency using a pager and text messages are sent to the pager using a radio waves. So a pager is like a, a kind of stripped down smartphone. It just gives you text on the little screen. And when someone sends you a message, it's going to be a text message. Hospitals uh, use this uh, quite a lot. So for three marks in part A, we're asked to do the following. We're asked to calculate the wavelength of radio waves, given that the frequency of the radio waves is 153 MHz. So what equation are we going to use then? We take a look at our data sheets, and there's three equations from the kind of waves section. And you can see the one we're going to use is going to be V equals F times lambda. V being the speed of the wave, F being the frequency of the wave, and lambda, or after, being the wavelength of the waves. So we can write that equation down then. We can say that speed V is going to equal to F times lambda. Now, we're asked to find what the wavelength is. So remember, in this case, we have to do a bit of uh, moving about. So we've got to find lambda on its own. And to do that, we have to divide both sides by frequency. So we have V divided by F is going to give you the wavelength on its own. So that's just done the rearranging of the equation. What about the data? Well, the speed V of all electromagnetic waves, and that includes radio waves, is the speed of light. So we can write down 3 times 10 to the power 8 metres per second. We know the frequency of the wave has been given to us in the question. It's 153 megahertz. And megahertz is going to be 1 million. But we can write that in standard form as the following frequency is going to equal to 153 times 10 to the power 6 hertz. So that's has got the wave speed and the wave frequency. All we have to do is calculate the wavelength, so we'll do that down here. Wavelength lambda is going to equal to the wave speed, which is 3 times 10 to the power 8, and it's going to be meters per second. And divided by the frequency of the wave, which we found out was 153 times 10 to the power 6. And frequency is hertz, but the other unit for hertz is a second to the minus 1. So you can see the 2 seconds to the minus 1s cancel out, and we're left with a metre, which is the unit for the wavelength. So we do that in a calculator. We end up with 1.96 metres. And of course we can write that into keep the significant figures the same, we can write that equal to 2.0 metres. So the wavelength of these waves reaching the pager is 2.0 metres. Question 9b. When a pager receives a message, it beeps loudly and a light on the pager flashes. A crew member holding the pager observes the beeps and flashes happening at the same time. But a second crew member who is 100 metres away from the pager, also observes the beeps and the flashes. Explain why the second crew member does not observe the beeps and flashes happening at the same time. And we get two marks for this. Well, here's a picture of what's happening. You can see the crew member and the second crew member separated by 100 metres. Now, the first crew member will see the flash of light and hear the beep of sound instantaneously because it's happening beside him. But for the second crew member, he's going to witness a race between the speed of sound and the speed of light. Now the speed of light, we know, is going to be 3 times 10 to the power 8 metres per second. So that's going to cover 100 metres almost instantaneously. So when the first crew member sees the flash of light, the second crew member will see the flash of light almost instantaneously. There'll be no time difference because the speed of light is much, much greater uh, than the speed of sound. Because the speed of sound is 340 metres per second. Now that's much, 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 much slower than the speed of light. So therefore in the race, the speed of light arrives almost instantaneously and the speed of sound lags behind. So what the crew, second crew member witnesses is the flash of light happening instantaneously and about a third of a second later you'll hear the beep from the first crew member's pager because the speed of sound is much, much, much slower.
And that's the little description there. The speed of sound is much, much, much slower than the speed of light. Therefore, light waves will arrive almost instantaneously with the sound waves arriving a short time afterwards. And you can work out how long the waves will arrive, the sound waves will arrive. You don't have to do this calculation, but we'll do it anyway. Because we know the time is going to equal to the distance travelled by the sound divided by the speed of sound. And the distance travelled by the sound is 100 metres. And the speed of sound is about, well, we'll just make a guess here to make it easy for ourselves, round about the ballpark of 300 metres per second. We'll just estimate for a quick calculation. So you can see t is going to be about one third of a second. So when that flash of light from the first crew member goes off, the second crew member sees it instantaneously because of the such high speeds of light. But the speed of sound means that the second crew member will hear the pager going off about a third of a second after he sees the flash. Now, I'm going to put up a little movie we made in the school a couple of years ago, uh, and you can watch it. It's an experiment involving a special device called a flash bang device. And, well, without much ado, sit back, enjoy, and watch the experiment of the race between the speed of light and the speed of sound. So you want to have a race between sound and light. So what we must make, first of all, is some sort of device that will give a flash of light when it hears a sound. So the minute sound is made, light will be given off at the same time. Watch what happens with this device when I clack these two pieces of wood together and make a noise. They'll be picked up in the microphone and the flash will go off. There you go. Sound picked up by the microphone and flashing off the light bulb. So which arrived first at the camera, the sound or the light? Well, over this distance, we couldn't really tell. So our next move is to take our flash bang device outside, make the race longer, and see which reaches the camera first. Will it be sound, or will it be light? Let's see. Before we go outside to carry out the experiment, here is where the experiment was carried out. This is St Andrews High School in Coatbridge, and if we zoom in, we'll be able to see where we carried out the experiment. That's the building there. And we came out the door here. There's a very good application on Google Earth. It's called the Ruler, and if we click on the Ruler part up here, uh, that's it there, we get this little box up here which tells us the length of a line in metres. So Mr McKenna, the technician, stood here with the flashbang machine, and we walked down this road here, almost to the end of this building here. Now, I reckon we were probably here, which gives us a distance of about 110 metres. Now, that is where we carried out our experiment. Mr McKenna, the technician, stood here with the flashbang machine. We stood down here with the video camera and recorded what happened. Let's see what happened. Yeah. One more time, Miss McKenna. We can catch us. Question 9 continued, Part C. The lifeboat has a mass of 25,000 kilograms. When it's launched, it loses 4.5 times 10 to the power 5 joules of gravitational potential energy before it enters in the water. And for three marks, we've got to calculate the maximum speed of the lifeboat as it enters the water. Well, we assume at the top then it's got a potential energy of 4.5 times 10 to the power 5 joules. And at this particular point at the top, it will have zero kinetic energy, because it's not moving. 
But as the boat goes down the slope, it's going to lose its potential energy, and that lost potential energy is going to be changed into kinetic energy at the bottom. Now, we're assuming there's no friction here to take away some of the energy, which it had a potential energy. So at the bottom then, we can say that the potential energy is going to be equal to zero, and the kinetic energy is going to be equal to 4.5 times 10 to the power 5 joules. So there we have it. We have potential energy at the top, no kinetic energy, down at the bottom of the ramp, no potential energy, and all changed into kinetic energy. Now we know the formula for kinetic energy. The formula for kinetic energy is Ek, a very famous one. It's equal to one half the mass times the speed squared. Now we want to find the speed or the maximum speed of the lifeboat as it enters the water. And when we talk about the maximum speed, we're assuming it's not losing any energy, uh, overcoming friction going down the slope. All its potential energy has been changed into kinetic energy. That's why we see the maximum speed uh, we can find. So our first job is to rearrange the kinetic energy formula into uh, a one which just shows us V. So you can see that half there. Well, I multiply both sides by two and I end up with two times the kinetic energy is going to equal to mv squared. I've taken away the half. Now I want to find the value of v squared first of all. So I've got to divide each side by m to get v squared on its own. So I have 2ek divided by m and that's going to give us v squared. So I've done all the hard work so far. That's a good bit of the work done there. But I want to find v squared, so if I just change things down a bit, a bit I have v squared is going to equal to 2 times the kinetic energy divided by m. And if I take the square root of both sides, I get an expression for the speeds as the boat goes into the water. It's going to be the square root of double the kinetic energy divided by the mass. Now this is a little bit of formula you have to really learn. Uh, how you can go from a half mv squared to find v if you know the kinetic energy. So now we know all that, we can just put in our numbers and find out what v is. So v is going to be equal to the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy. I'll put this in brackets. 2 times 4.5 times 10 to the power 5. And I'm going to divide that by a value of m, the mass of the boat, which is 25,000 kilograms. And of course, that's going to be the square root of everything there. Now if you take your time and do that in your calculator, you'll get an answer of 6.0 meters per second. So that will be the speed of the boat, uh, of the lifeboat, as it enters into the water. Part 2. Explain why, in practice, the speed of the lifeboat as it enters the water is less than calculated in C part I. Well at the beginning we know we've got a certain amount of potential energy EP. But in practice, as the lifeboat moves down the ramp into the water, then some of that potential energy will be transferred into sound energy. It makes a noise going down the ramp. And also, some of that energy will be lost due to the work done by friction. So in reality, we've got a lost amount of energy due to the work done by friction and also due to the some of the energy being changed into sound. And that means we're going to have less kinetic energy at the bottom. Let's see how it all stacks up. There's original potential energy, and there is our energy lost, which is effectively lopped off the potential energy. So the remaining green bit is all we have got available, and we can see that will be transferred into kinetic energy. So there we go, there's a whole energy story. If I can slide this one over here, you can see we begin with potential energy, EP, and some of the energy, the red block, is the energy which is lost due to work done by friction and also due to some of the energy being transferred into sound. And that means there's going to be less kinetic energy available. Now, if there's less kinetic energy available, that must mean there's going to be less speed because kinetic energy, we know, is equal to half mv squared. So you've got less kinetic energy, as we did in the previous problem, you're going to have less speed available. And that's the story.